This worksheet demonstrates the use of Maple to investigate Markov chain models. The following Maple techniques are highlighted. Creating a custom function, solving a specific example, and creating a generic solution. We'll begin with an introduction to Markov chains. A Markov chain is a weighted diagram representing a discrete time system that can be in any number of discrete states. The nodes of the diagram represent the states, and the directed edge weight between two states, A and B, represent the probability called the transition probability from A to B, that the system will move from state B in the next time period, given that it is currently in state A. The sum of the transition probabilities out of any node is, by definition, 1. The set of probabilities is stored in a transition matrix P, where entry i, j is the transition probability from state i to state j. Clearly, the sum of each row of P is 1. A well-known theorem of Markov chains states that the probability of the system being in state j after k time periods, given that the system begins in state i, is the i, j entry of p to the power of k. A common question arising in Markov chain models is, what is the long-term probability that the system will be in each state? The vector containing these long-term probabilities, denoted pi, is called the steady state vector of the Markov chain. This Maple application creates a procedure for answering this question. As a case study, we'll analyze a two-server computer network whose servers have known probabilities of going down or being fixed in any given hour. The goal is to compute the long-term probability that at least one server is working. The following describes the algorithm for computing the steady state vector. So we'll start by creating a Maple procedure called steady state vector. This vector will take as input the transition matrix of a Markov chain and it's going to return the steady state vector. This is going to contain the long-term probabilities of the system being in each state. The input transition matrix may be in symbolic or in numeric form. The procedure steady state vector implements the following algorithm. So we start, given an n by n transition matrix P, let I be the n by n identity matrix and Q equals P minus I. Let E be the n vector of all ones, and B be the n plus 1 vector with a 1 in position n plus 1 and 0 elsewhere. To compute the steady state vector, we solve the following linear system for pi, the steady state vector of the Markov chain. Appending E to Q and a final 1 to the end of the 0 vector on the right hand side ensures that the solution vector pi has components summing to 1. Here is the steady state vector procedure. The input is a transition matrix P, and the output is a steady state vector pi reflecting the long-term probability of the system being in each state. In this code, comments are preceded by the hashtag symbol. A bit more about this code. So we said P is our input. We declare this here as being a form of a matrix. In our procedure, we also declare several local variables, n, q, e, qt and b. In order to make sure that this code is self-contained, we load the linear algebra package inside of this procedure using this use statement. So we see use linear algebra in, and we end right near the bottom of our procedure with ending the use. So the code, extracting the dimension of the transition matrix P is done using n colon equals linear algebra dimension of P. Then we compute Q, so Q here, is assigned to be P minus the identity matrix of size N. E is the vector of all ones. So here we declare E is a sequence here of all ones from one to N. We append the vector E to Q and transpose the result using the linear algebra trans transpose command. Inside of here, this is just a vector notation. So we're just concatenating Q and E. B is the unit vector with one in position N plus one. So here we declare linear algebra unit vector, n plus 1, n plus 1. And finally, we return the solve for the linear system, qt times pi is equal to b. So we return here least squares of this solution. So let's see how this all works with an example. In this example, we're going to be talking about the reliability of a two-server network. So the problem here is to estimate the long-term probability that at least one server in a two-server computer network is working during any given hour. We'll model this problem as a Markov chain as follows. So we assume that the network can be in one of three states. One, both servers are working. Two, one server is working. 
or three, neither server is working. So let's let lambda one be the probability that a server fails when both were okay an hour ago. Lambda two be the probability that a second server fails when one was okay an hour ago. Mu one be the probability that a broken server gets fixed when one was okay an hour ago. And mu two be the probability that a broken server gets fixed when both were down an hour ago. The transition matrix can then be declared as follows. So here we have P as a matrix, and I'll just hit return here to enter this in. So here we have all the entries, one minus mu one, mu one, lambda one, one minus lambda one minus mu two, mu two, lambda two, one minus mu two. So as we said before, every row here does add to one. So note that the steady state vector produces pi symbolically. So numeric values of pi and lambda are not required. So here if I declare pi as steady state vector p, this will return a symbolic result for us. So if we were to go through now and specify a couple of values, say for lambda 1, lambda 2, mu 1, and mu 2, we could return an exact result. So now if we ask maple for the value of pi, the updated vector is given reflecting the inputs above. Now by inspection, we can actually look at these values and see that 1 plus 100 plus 10,000 actually does add up to 1. So this is a stochastic vector. So to calculate the long-term probability that at least one server is operable at any given hour, this is actually going to be equal to the sum of the last two components of pi. So probability working for this example is going to be 10,100 over 10,101. So if we wanted to take a 10-digit floating point approximation, we can use the evalf command. So we'll do evalf of probability working to 10 digits, and we'll find that, that that's 99.99%. Now in order to reclaim lambda and mu and make sure those are both symbolic, uh, we can do an unassignment. So here we do lambda colon equals lambda in single evaluation quotes, as well as mu colon equals mu in single evaluation quotes. So let's generalize this Markov chain, allowing for the possibility of both servers going down at once or both being repaired at once. So this is going to again be equal to P as our matrix, and this is a slightly more complex formulation than we saw before. Let's use our steady state vector procedure on P. As we can see here, here is the larger result. So what about a purely numeric result? Well, again, if we create a new matrix, we fill this with numeric values instead of symbolic values. We declare this to P2. We can then, again, use the steady state vector command in order to generate the steady state vector. If we use floating point values rather than using fraction values up here in a new matrix called P3, we'll find that computing the steady state vector for P3 will give us back floating point results. So we saw before, again, everything adds to one here, and this returns the steady state vector. 